Okay, so today we're going to go over um, how to configure a LAMP stack on Linux. So this is an Ubuntu and a Debian based lecture. Um, so what is a LAMP stack or what is LAMP? So if you know what um, like a full stack web developer is, um, that's that's just someone that can operate in like um, If anyone manage... is talking, we can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Um, but should I repeat what I just said? Did I cut out or something? Um, hello. <laughs> Wait, what part did you guys like stop hearing or did you hear all of it? We heard all of it. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so um, anyways, if you know what like a full stack web developer is, it's essentially someone who can operate like the back end and the front end of um, like a web server. Uh, so that's like server side and client side programming. And a LAMP stack is essentially like the same thing, except it uses like a specialized group of software. So LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Um, so similar to like a full stack for a website, um, like Apache is back end and MySQL is also back end. And then PHP would be the front end. And it's all ran on a Linux operating system. So Essentially, a LAMP just refers to like a group of software that you'll typically install together and all of them uh, work together to do things like managing like a web server and like running dynamic websites. Um, so, but for purposes of today, we're just going to be going over how you can install a LAMP web server and also configure it securely. Um, so the first service or piece of software we're going to go over is Apache. Um, Apache manages the back end of web servers. Um, there, there's a lot of different like software you can install for this purpose. But uh, in the case of like a LAMP stack, uh, we use specifically Apache. Um, so in order to install Apache, you can just run this command uh, using the package manager. And the package is called Apache2. And then after that, you'll need to allow from the firewall. There are two ports that you need to allow. Um, there's port 80 and there's port 443. Uh, the reason there's two is because port 80 refers to the HTTP protocol, um, which is on port 80, like I just said. And then port 443 refers to the HTTPS protocol, uh, which you can enable by configuring SSL, which we'll talk about later. But essentially, you need to allow both of these ports to receive inbound connections so that people can actually connect to your web server. Because um, if you've been following our older lectures, then you'll know that the default policy for inbound connections is to deny them. So uh, running, running either of these commands will allow inbound connections on these ports, meaning people like outside of your network can access your web server. So the first option you can do using UFW is just UFW allow, and then I have it in parentheses because I didn't want to like type it out twice, but uh, this just means you do UFW allow 80, and then you on a different command, you do UFW allow 443. And oh, another thing is when you write it like this, the default behavior is to allow inbound connections. So like adding in right here would do the exact same thing. If you want to allow outbound connections, which you don't really need to do, you can just replace the out with an in, but by having nothing, it specifies inbound connections. Um, and that's with UFW syntax. And then with IP tables, you'll want to append uh, to the input chain uh, this TCP protocol, which is on the port 80. Uh, and then on a different command, you would do D port 443. And um, the action that you'll want to do is accept the, in, the incoming protocol or the incoming port. Um, so that's how you allow it from the firewall. Um, the next thing that you'll want to do to secure Apache is to enable this configuration called the security configuration. Um, a lot of the important config that you'll need to secure Apache is going to be inside uh, this file, or at least all the config that we're going to go over for the purposes of this lecture. Um, 
So this command, essentially the A2 stands for Apache 2, which is the package that you have to install. And then EN stands for enable, and then conf is obviously configuration. There's a number of other commands that you can run to have similar functionality. Um, so for example, if I wanted to disable the uh, security con config, then I would do a2 disconf security. And um, there's also other configurations. Uh, we don't have to really go over them right now, but there's other configurations that you could like enable and disable using that syntax. Um, and aside from configuration, there's other functionality that you can use with Apache. I'll go over all this once we're in the VM, but um, for now, uh, there's also uh, like mods, and then there's also sites. So how you would enable and disable mods um, are with the a2n mod or a2dis mod command, and then the mod name. And then same thing with sites. It all follows a pretty similar syntax, so it's uh, kind of intuitive. There's a2n site to enable a specific site on the web server, and then dis site to disable it, and then the site name. Um, but again, for for securing it, you don't really need to enable or disable any mods or sites. Well, you could, but that would be a bit more advanced. So, like. Um, the basic rundown for configuring Apache securely is just enabling this security configuration um, and then changing this configuration. So I, I just want to like get the point across so it makes sense because like if you want to do some more research into this and find more advanced configuration, it definitely helps to have an idea of like the overall structure of an Apache web server and like the overall functionality of all the commands that you can use. And so um, the specific uh, configuration that you're going to want to edit is in this conf available uh, security.conf file. And there's three primary lines that you'll want to make sure are configured correctly. And that is trace enable, server tokens, and server signature set to off, minimal, and off, respectively. And what these do, essentially, they they hide your like servers. They're all kind of like your server signature. Server tokens relate specifically to an HTTP response. So it hides your web server from the HTTP response header. Um, server signature is for like uh, like default generated sites, like an error site or something. If you don't have your custom like site made, then the default generated site will have your web server like in like a footnote. Um, trace enable is kind of similar. So essentially, you, you just you just don't want people to know exactly what kind of web server you're running because then um, then it would give them like the knowledge or the capacity to execute like attacks. Um, so the next thing you'll want to configure for Apache is enabling SSL. Um, SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. If you're here for the um, FTP service lectures then you'll probably know what this is. And also, the process is essentially the same for most services that use SSL or like um, TLS. Um, but essentially, it just secures your connections on the HTTPS protocol. So to enable SSL, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's the a2n mod command to enable mod. And the mod is named SSL. And then there's the a2n site command to enable sites. And the site name is default-SSL. Um, so that will enable the mod in the site that you need for SSL, uh, respectively. And then, then you'll need to generate your own uh, public certification and public key. And uh, so you can use that. You can do that using the open SSL command. And then you have all of these um, arguments. But the only important arguments that you need to know are this dash key out. Uh, and then there's this long directory here. And then the dash out. And then another long directory. Um, I mean, it, it's helpful to know what these are, but really you should just be copying copying these commands into like your team's checklist or onto like some notes or anything, so that during the like competition you can access them quickly and you won't have to like remember like oh shoot is it RSA ten twenty four or like two fifty six. So, um, so I would highly recommend you just copy and paste this somewhere that you can access quickly, but. Uh, you should still know that this dash key out argument specifies where you're going to export the like the SSL key. 
um, the private key, and then the dash out argument specifies where you're going to save the certificate. So these are the two files that will be generated from this entire command. So uh, you ought to know where they are, which is just specified in this command. Because the reason for that is because after that, you'll need to point your SSL configuration to the two files that you generated using that command. And the place you do that is inside the sites available directory within the default dash SSL conf. Um, if you'll notice, this is the same site that you enabled up here with the a2 end site command. Um, so I'll, I'll go into more detail once I'm, we're looking at the VM based on how this works. But so this is the file you'll need to modify after you have already enabled it. Um, and in order to point your SSL files to the configuration, uh, well, first you'll enable the SSL engine using the SSL engine on. And then next you'll like point the files using these two lines. So if you notice again, um, I'm kind of really drilling the point home, but so this file, the certificate file corresponds to the output of this command with the dash out argument. And then this certificate key file points to the output of the key out argument. And then afterwards, uh, you just restart the Apache 2 service. Okay, so now I'm gonna move into a VM and show you guys like this entire process again. So if you want to follow along while I'm in the VM, uh, you should try to open the presentation. Here, I'll just send the link again. OK, so. Oops. OK, so like I said, we'll start off with installing Apache 2. Um, in CyberPatriot, oftentimes they'll already have Apache, or they'll already have all the services installed. But in the case that they don't, and they ask you like specifically to like install a LAMP stack, then you'll need to install the packages yourself. But uh, most of the time, they're actually already there. So uh, nonetheless, you can just run the apt install Apache 2 command to get the package. And then to allow from the firewall, uh, UFW allow 80 and UFW allow 443 um, for HTTP and HTTPS. And then, uh, uh, you need to run this with sudo a apache2 enable configuration security okay so it's already enabled which is good and then um, now we can move into the okay so the directory where all this information or all the configuration is stored is in the etsy apache2 oh i should probably add that on the slides it's in the etsy apache2 uh directory so as you can see there's um you have the main configuration file. You have some other stuff like environment variables and ports. And then you have these folders, the conf enabled mods available, sites available, and et cetera. I'll just, do I have Ranger installed? OK, well, I'll just install it right now. OK, so I want to give you guys an idea of how the directory works and how they all like function together. Um, I don't know if this is easier to like see or anything. but so. If you notice you have conf available and then you have conf enabled and then you have mods available and you have mods enabled and sites available and sites enabled. So there's like a lot of repetition here, but the reason for that is because in each file ending in dash available, that's uh, like quite literally the list of all the configuration or mods or sites that you have available to you. So uh, the default generated like configuration stuff will just be in here. And then enabled inside the dash enable directory, you'll have the stuff that you actually have enabled on your web server. Um, so you can create new configuration by just making a file inside the conf available. And then the way you enable things are, so for example, if I wanted to make like some configuration, then I might go into conf enabled, or oops, I go into conf uh, available and then test.conf and then I'll just, make this configuration, which does nothing. Oh, whoops. OK, so so this obviously does nothing. But then you would do um, a2nconf and then test.conf. And that would enable the configuration that you just made. And 
what it means by enabling is it creates a symlink into this conf enabled file. So you can see when I list out all the files, they're all like light blue. That essentially means that they're all symlinks and symlinks are like, like the same way that like shortcuts are on Windows or I don't know if there's the same thing on Mac, but like how you, or, or like most operating systems, how you can create like a shortcut of a file. A symlink is essentially like the same thing. It's like a shortcut of the configuration, but now it's inside this conf enabled directory. So it's uh, like enabled. So that's like the dynamic of how um, enabling like configuration and mods and sites works. So like um, that's the same reason why you need to enable the security uh, configuration like before or you need to enable a conf security configuration and you actually edit the security configuration inside the security.conf within the conf available. So I'll do that now. So. I don't know if that really made that much sense, but uh, if you just like play around with it more, it'll make more sense. Okay, so like I said, the three primary lines that you'll need to edit are trace enable off. So this is already off, so we're good there. And then server tokens. Right now it's at OS, which is bad, which means it's like showing what operating system I'm running or what, what operating system the web server is on inside the HTTP request. So we're gonna change that to minimal. And then server signature, it's on right now. And notice that um, right above it says server signature off, but um, don't be like misled. Um, so it's actually commented out with the hashtag or the pound. So like the configuration that's actually running is the server signature on. And I just closed it. And then so we can change this to off now and now it's secure. And then save the file. And then next we will want to configure SSL. So a2nmod, sudo a2nmod SSL and sudo a2nsite default SSL. Okay, yeah, so once again, notice how we use the a2nmod SSL. And if I go into the mods available, um, you can see you have this ssl.conf and ssl.load. So these two files are like are what make up the SSL mod. Um, and if I, if I go into CD mods enabled, which has all my enabled mods, then you can see um, so we have the SSL inside the mods enabled uh, folder too. And if I uh, disable this mod, then now it's gone. So it's not in the mods enabled file anymore, but it's still in the mods available because I haven't deleted it or anything. But yeah, that's essentially how enabling and disabling uh, like things work in Apache, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna re-enable it because that's what you're supposed to do. And then enable the site, which I already did. And now we're gonna run this long open SSL command to generate the two certificates. Um, I did not use sudo. Okay, and how you generate these SSL certificates, uh, you might already know how to do this if you're watching the, or during the FTP lecture, but uh, you can just skip through like literally all of these. And then it'll, it'll generate those two files to the um, Etsy SSL dash certs directory, or no, Etsy SSL dash private and the Etsy SSL dash certs directories. So um, after that, then we can go into sites available. Oh, by the way, um, I've been editing all of these files in the sites available directory, even though, like, like I said, there, there's essentially a symlink or there's a, like a shortcut of each file that's enabled inside the sites enabled or mods enabled directories. But I've been editing in the available folder. So um, it really doesn't matter, but I think like general practice is to edit them inside the available because this is where the original file is and not the sim link. Um, so now we can edit the default ssl.conf. Okay, wait, I'm in the wrong folder. So all we need to do is 
enable the SSL engine. So it's already on, which is good. And then certificate file, we need to point it to the correct place. So just delete this. Um, it should be in apache2.crt. And then there we go. And then you can just save. And then after you've done all of that, then you can finally restart the service. And I didn't use sudo once again. OK. <laughs> yeah, and after you restart the service, then all your changes will take place. And that's not just for the SSL. Um, like Also, for like editing the security config, you'll need to restart the service. Or you can just restart the service after you've done everything. Um, OK, yeah, so that's Apache. Now let me. All right, do you guys have any questions or anything about Apache? I keep pronouncing it differently. I'll just take that as a no. OK, so next we're going to go over MySQL or MySQL. Um, My, MySQL is like a database software. Um, the way it works in LAMP is Oh, I didn't really mention the how it worked, how all of them worked in LAMP, but essentially Apache is for the server backend or for like Apache is for like the web server itself. And then the MySQL stores like database information that the web server might need, like user info or something. Um, and then the and PHP is used to like process the web content. Um, like the same way you would have like HTML or something. Uh, but like Obviously not exactly the same. Okay, so uh, in order to install MySQL, you just sudo apt get install MySQL server um, because remember you're not in, you're not like hosting the client, you're hosting the server, which is why you install the server package because there's also a MySQL client package. Um, and then most of the configuration, if not all of it, will be in this um, Etsy MySQL mysql.conf.d/mysqld.conf like most of the configuration will be in here, but depending on your version, it might be different. In which case you should try to grep for one of these like lines um, within this Etsy MySQL directory, and then it'll point you to wherever like the actual configuration file is. But most of the time it'll be in this directory. Um, so the three like lines you'll need to change are bind address, localhost, user MySQL, and local in file equals zero. So bind address, localhost, just like, binds the database to like your own network or or like your home address um, because you don't want people to be like remotely connecting to your web server um, depending on like what the readme says though um, for round three most likely there won't be any like external services depending on it um, but like if you go to nats maybe they might have some services where it will require you to have MySQL bound to like a different port or a different address. But for the sake of like round three, uh, unless the readme specifies against it, you should always just bind the like address to localhost. And then user MySQL makes it so that like uh, the service is ran by this MySQL user. If it's user root, that's definitely a vulnerability because you don't want to have the service being ran as root. If that were the case, then if your database was exploited somehow, then the attacker would have access to like the entire like root privilege, uh, which is definitely not good. And then local in file just like loads in loads files into the database locally. Um, you don't really have to think about it too much, but essentially there's like a vulnerability in that, uh, in that like attackers can execute their own code onto your database, but Anyway, so these three are the like primary lines that you want to change, and these are also like primarily what you'll get points for. <clears throat> and then after that, you can run the MySQL underscore secure underscore installation command. And what this will do is it'll configure like your root password and set like, or it won't conf it won't set your root password, but it'll like set password requirements. It can also like remove anonymous users, and um, it also can like disable root login. Uh, or remote root login, and then after that, you can like run the you can run a database terminal 
using this mysql-u root-p command. Um, so if you know like how to actually use mysql and like add tables and stuff, um, I've never actually seen this before, but if for some reason the readme asks you to like create like a table or add some like rows or something, then you could do that once you have the terminal open using this command. Um, but I've like I've never seen that before, so it's unlikely, but useful. Uh, and then after that, you restart the service using like the same syntax and everything. So let me change it to my VM. Okay, so first what we do is just clear my screen. You install the MySQL server package. And a thing about the installation is like, I didn't really, I didn't press anything other than like writing the install command, but now it's like prompting me to set the MySQL root user password. Um, so you probably should like set this password right here. Otherwise, um, or you, sh you should just set the password here and make sure the password is like not super simple or anything. Because once you set the password requirements, you want to make sure that your root user password is already like complex. So set like a, a chunky password, a, little beef, a beefy one. I didn't type it in right now. Okay. And then the installation will resume. All right, there we go. So um, now we can go in the Etsy MySQL directory and just like navigate around here, weave through these. And then, yeah, so here's the main configuration file. Uh, like I said, if, if you were to go into this file and then you see there's like nothing in it or something, um, in, in this case, we're good because we have this we have a lot of stuff configuration in here, and we also have this MySQLD tag, which means this is the correct file. But if there was nothing in there and it's like a weird version of MySQL, then you could always grep and then dash R, capital R, which is recursive. So it looks through like everything in here, or it should go one back actually. So grep dash R, and then you can look for MySQLD. Um, or that might not be super, wait, I think I typed that in wrong. Oh yeah, it's because it's using regex. There you go. Um, yeah, so you can see there's only one file with the MySQLD brackets, which is uh, this file, which we've already talked about in the mysql.conf.d, mysql.d.cnf file. So that means this is the correct config file. Um, I'll just repeat that one more time. What I did there, what I did just there was I searched for uh, the tag or the bracket mysql d bracket and i had to escape it out otherwise it was using regex but uh, this just searches for what file the main configuration is in if you can't find it because like if you look around here it could get kind of trippy like you have this my.cnf file which you might think has config in it but there's nothing in there and then you have like deviant.cnf and there's nothing in there either or there's a little bit, but this is in the main configuration. So it's helpful to know like on the fly how to find configuration if it's missing. Uh, that's just that's just like Linux stuff though. That's not really specific to, what am I doing? That's not specific to MySQL. Okay, so once we're actually in the file, cause I just waste a lot of time talking about that, but uh, then you can search for these three lines, find address. So this is already correct because um, I don't know, you might know, but 127.0.0.1 that ip address is essentially the same thing as your local host it's like your default gateway uh meaning this is already correct but like if you really wanted to you could still change it to local host and it'd be exactly the same but that's already correct and then user user equals mysql so this is correct too and then local in file okay it looks like there's nothing in here so we can just add it ourselves equals zero and then now we can run the mysql secure installation command um it'll prompt me for my root password which remember you prompted like 
that you typed in while you're installing it. Uh, if you didn't install MySQL, which means you didn't like configure the root password, then they'll likely like tell you what the root password is in the README. Otherwise, you can like reinstall it, but you probably shouldn't do that because there might be like important information on the tables. Um, okay, so this first thing is asking like, uh, would you like? Uh, basically, this is for like password requirements to enforce like strong passwords. Uh, you'll want to press Y for this to say yes. And then there's three levels of like how strong the password has to be. And we're just gonna make it as strong as possible. And change the password for root. No, because we already set like a strong password. And this one is asking if we wanna remove anonymous users. Yes, definitely. Uh, this one is asking if you wanna disallow remote login on root user. Uh, yes. And then Finally, this is asking to remove the test database and access to it. You should also remove this, so yes. And reload privilege tables just makes all the changes take effect, so you can go yes again. There we go. So um, that's all for like actual configuration. Like I said, though, if you want to do something like see the tables, then you can run that command, mysql-u root-p. Um, and that will like open up this MySQL terminal. And then you can do like whatever you want from here. You can do like, I don't know if this is the correct command. Oh yeah, there. So this shows all like the MySQL users, or you can just use like flex your MySQL knowledge if you know like query languages, <laughs> kind of like obscure, but yeah. And then you can restart the service. And I didn't go sudo again. All right, there we go. Okay, next we're gonna talk about PHP. Um, so to install it, it's like the same as everything else, just app get install PHP. And PHP is like super convenient because like all the configuration is in a single file. There's no like other commands you need to run or anything. You're just like getting the package and then editing the configuration file. And this file is located within Etsy PHP 7.0 uh, slash CLI slash PHP dot any. Um, that might be a lot to remember, uh, or I mean, you don't have to remember it, but it could also like, like the MySQL, this could also change depending on the version of PHP. So for like a definitive way to determine what file the main configuration is in, you can run this command, php two dashes any, and then grep for loaded configuration file. Um, I'll show you later what that does, but that essentially will output a directory which contains the main configuration, uh, which might look, which might just be this file. Um, and then within that file, you're gonna configure quite a few lines. Uh, so first expose php equals off, um, this is kind of like similar to the server signature and server tokens that you would configure with Apache. Essentially it just hides like PHP from uh, the client side render. Um, file uploads off because you don't want file uploads. Uh, and then allow your URL F open and allow URL include. These are like two commands uh, or two functions in PHP that you'll just want to disallow because typically there can be like a lot of like cross-site scripting involved with these functions. So like disallowing them is uh, safe um, to prevent a lot of backdoors. And then session cookie lifetime equals zero. Uh, what this does, it just sets the lifetime of like a cookie to expire like once your browser restarts, which is what the zero indicates. Um, I believe you could also set it in like seconds, but I'm not really sure, but zero is just what's most secure. And then cookie secure equals on. And then hash function equals SHA-256. That just sets like um, what function you're gonna like encode your hashes with or, or what hash function you're using, which is just SHA-256. And then you can, oh, and there's no there's no actual PHP service that you restart. Uh, instead, you just restart the Apache 2 service. So let me go through that again. By the way, is there any questions on like anything?
Okay, well, okay, so first we install uh, PHP. Then, um, shoot, okay, we go to the Etsy PHP 7.0 CLI php.ini. This is a file, so. Okay, wait, oops. Right. Okay, there, so this is the main configuration file. Here, I'll just show you real quick again, the command that we use to determine where it is. So you run the php dash dash i and i command, and then you grep for loaded configuration file. And so this will show you like what directory the main configuration is in. Uh, which is the same directory that we have on the slides, but it could vary. Okay, so first we do expose PHP. This is on on, which is insecure, so we change it to off. File uploads on, change this to off. Allow URL f open. This is on, we want it to be off. This is already off, which is good. Session session.cookie lifetime zero, which is good. Secure. Oh, by the way, um, I probably mentioned this earlier, but like the way I'm typing at the bottom of this uh, like terminal here, this is just like a functionality of Vim. It's essentially like control F. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna save this and then like you don't have to use Vim. Uh, I think Rafi probably went over a lot of these earlier, but like you can use any kind of file editor that you want. Like this is Jedit, uh, which has like a nice GUI, I guess. And then you can actually control F for stuff. It's kind of useful. Uh, yeah, but. Okay, session not cookie underscore secure. And this is commented. Um, by the way, in PHP comments are, are like, the semicolon, so you can uncomment this and then set it to, what was it? Yeah, on. And then the last one, session.hash underscore function. Okay, um, so you want this to be SHA-256. There we go, then you can save this file and then, like I said, restart Apache. And that's all you have to do for PHP. And that's actually all you have to do for LAMP. Okay, well, another thing you should consider is that, like I've mentioned this in probably like every lecture that we've done on services, but these lectures that we're doing aren't like completely in depth. These will give you like a substantial amount of points if you just do like exactly what's on these slides. Um, but there's like a lot more configuration that you could possibly do which Cyber Patriot often will like throw at you. So you should really be prepared for like as much as possible. And what I mean by that is you should try to like scour the internet, like really look like for long periods of time or something, just looking for like security hardening guides or like specifically like service hardening guides for like various services, like the ones we've talked about, like Apache, PHP, MySQL. Um, but just in general, any kind of configuration, you should really be looking on the internet for more resources, like always trying to find more information about stuff that you could possibly do. Because like, if there's something that you can configure, Cyber Patriot will often like have you configure it. And like the tough part about this competition is they never release answers or anything. So like everything is up to you to like find more information, um, get better, yeah. So don't become complacent and just use like these slides. Really like do some, uh, independent research. Yep, and that's all.